Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello friends, in today's talk we are going to talk about social networks, media networks and the way they extend our identities. I believe that uh, before this we have already covered certain areas of group dynamics, we have de dealt with uh, conversation skills and speaking skills and some of these things do get linked to the concept of network in an interesting way. However, what we are going to do today will be slightly <coughs> different <coughs> and uh, these are some of the things that we will be doing together. The first thing is uh, networking skills within a social context, we will talk about that because that is directly related to the area that we are going to cover today. That is also directly related to soft skills uh, which is what this entire course is about, communication again about which this course is, the relevance of networking how it is significant. Then we will go for a more technical definition of networks or uh, networking especially in a technological context. Uh, we will talk about different levels at which uh, networks are generally analyzed, the relevance of that. We will talk about uh, networking in the context of technology that is net, we will talk about social media, there are various components, relevance and implications and we will also discuss how these things in fact, extend the study of networking in a sociocultural context or having a good networking skills, because some of the skills that we will have to talk about, we will try to explore are skills which go beyond the normal skills that we learn when we socialize and when we network at a physical level, at an interpersonal level, at a social level without using technology. So, the moment we start using technology, certain other things also come in and we will take all, uh, we will take cognizance to those and we will explore them as well. <coughs> okay. So, networking skills, we need certain networking skills in order to be successful uh, in a community. You see that um, if we do not have friends, if we do not have relationships with people, uh, we have a very difficult time we need to go to uh, meet doctors, uh, we need to uh, find psychiatrists or counsellors to take care of us, because you see that for within quotes a normal healthy relationship within a society, networking is very essential. So, the mindset is very important, if we are going to socialize, if we are going to be good at uh, our communication skills as well as our soft skills, socialization is important, because you need to have connections, you need to have influences and uh, somebody am <coughs> who is well connected is probably able to do more things more easily. So, the mindset has to be changed. If you are a person who generally does not interact with people, then make it a ha habit of uh, interacting with people. Some of the things which we have done in listening, speaking and conversation skills as well as some of the things which we will be doing when we discuss empathy later on will be relevant for this for developing these skills. So, have a positive mindset and a positive mindset will be evolved when you have a purpose, you have a certain set of goals and along with the positive mindsets, who to network with, who to contact, develop, evolve contact with also will automatically happen. Let us say that if you are interested in the field of advertising, obviously you will start exploring people who are in that particular line rather than people who are very close friends fine, you will keep friendship with them, but new friendships, new relationships probably will have to be in that particular area and related areas. So, you see that uh, if you have a set of goals, then networking is easier, but that does not mean that you let slip an opportunity to interact and to new people, because you never know who is going to be helpful at, at a certain other point in your life. So, you can have that habit 
and the second thing is that who should you get in touch with. You can create a mental map as I told you once you have set your goals it will be easier for you to develop a mental map of who you should get in touch with. Human interaction when it comes to the things that you need to keep in mind when you are evolving networking is to be genuine, make friends not contacts, they are not just business people. Look at the relationship side of it because if you treat a human being as a human being then it is much easier negotiating things, it is much easier coming across to that person as a genuine person. Friends with connected people can be immense help because if you do not know somebody then somebody else will be aware of that person and it will help. There is a con uh, concept of six degrees of separation of which we will discuss a little later which is all about friends. Follow up maintain contacts that is very very important because establishing a friendship is very easy, but maintaining that sustaining that over a period of time is very difficult and you need to work on that. Because you see that you need to keep the communication channel open. People should know that uh, you are calling them up just like that even without a reason just to say hello rather than just calling up these people only when you need them. Then they will treat you as selfish. And then of course, there are things which you should know not to do and many of these things which you are supposed not to do are things we have covered when we have talked about group, dy group dynamics, when we have talked about conversation skills, listening and speaking skills, the basics of communication. <coughs> but before we move on to why network, let me explain <coughs> that uh, we have been networking throughout our lives whether we like it or not, because without collaboration we can, cannot survive. If you are looking at the early societies, if you are looking at a book of history, book of anthropology, uh, some of the earliest societies you find that uh, they survived only on the basis of collaboration. You see that in many communities there were certain rules like if somebody, if you are looking at the hunting communities, if one person managed to hunt food, then his job was to share it with everybody else. Why? Because unless he shares it with everybody else, the community will starve and tomorrow he is not guaranteed to get uh, let us say another uh, food item, another let us say animal, somebody else will get. So, sharing was the safest way of surviving. So, collaboration was very, very important. Okay. So, if you are looking at the ancient uh, traditions, if you are looking at the uh, our own roots, we find that we started with networking and it was because we networked that we evolved, we developed and we grew into a civilization. Now, you see that if you are looking at the <coughs> current state of civilization, then I would like to take an example from naked economics, where you see that uh, uh, Whelan talks about uh, a machine. He says that imagine a machine into which you let us say pour 1 lakh sheep, 1, one lakh uh, sacks of let us say wheat, wheat grains, let us say 20,000 uh, sacks of sugar let us say 500,000 uh, uh, let us say uh, packets of butter and so on and so forth. And at the end of the day, at, at the end of the process, a big aeroplane comes out from the other side of the particular machine. And then he tells us that such a machine actually exists, which is exchange, which is barter, which is transaction. Because you see that uh, we are producing different kinds of things and we are exchanging them with one another and this would not have been possible without the concept of networking, without the concept of transaction. So, right from the point of time when economics evolved, specialization evolved, networking has been going on. However, social networking is something uh, slightly different and as I told you even now when we isolate ourselves, we say that we are not going to interact with anybody else then that does not mean that we are not going to buy food which has been produced by somebody else. We are not going to watch TV which has been uh, produced for us by somebody else and uh, so on and so forth. So, everything that we see around us even if we isolate ourselves have been created by somebody else. So, you see that and these are all acts of collaboration or exchange, but they are exchange of uh, let us say goods and products not of information, not of uh, let us say uh, give and take of uh, cognitive or emotional components 
amongst people, which is what networking is all about. So, you see that clubs and forums, the moment you join a new place, there is some place to go, even uh, let us say the same thing expanding or being identified on social media, they all reflect this tendency of trying to network. Now, let us say that uh, <coughs> we look at uh, this particular diagram, where this is you and these are your let us say 5 friends 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. You will find that uh, 1 is network to let us say P and N and Z and 2 and of course, to U. 4 is network with K, L, 5 and of course, U. 3 is network to let us say Y, X and U. 1 is network to as whereas, P is only network to 1 and to nobody else. So, if you are even looking at this diagram, this gives us an idea that you are a very well networked person, because you have 5 friends, even 1 has 5 friends, but some of the others do not have so many friends, like Z has 1, 2 and 3 friends okay. and uh, let us say X, Y and P only have 1 friends each. So, what this tells us is the way somebody is well networked or ill networked. This is relevant, because this gives us an idea, this is just a kind of a small scale example of how even by looking at how people are networked, we are able to make certain guesses about their significance. For instance, one can say that U is influential, because he has so many friends, whereas P is not very influential, because he can only influence one person. This is just one category of influence. Other things also come in like how, what kind of relationship you have with these people, those would also decide how influential you are all and all that. But the point I was trying to make was that networking is a very much a part of our life and this is something which has been studied in a field known as uh, network analysis, okay, social network analysis. However, we will not go into that, but what we will do is talk about something which is we just mentioned 6 degrees of separation and a lot of experiments were done about this. Let us say that we have x and y and x is uh, somebody who lives in India and y is somebody who lives in let us say uh, USA and this is a black man and this is a Indian woman and they have absolutely no connection. Then the th theory tells us that if they have intermediary like One, two, three, four, five, six. So, if I am able to connect to, let us say I want to get in touch with our prime minister. So, I know somebody who, who is maybe a politician who has some influence. I just want to send a letter to the prime minister. So, I send it to this person. He knows somebody, let us say, who is an MP in Delhi. So, he sends it to that person. That person sends it to somebody who is maybe in the parliament and that person sends it to somebody, who can actually finally, send it to our prime minister. So, what you find is that, if you are looking at the same way between a Indian woman here and a, a black a man in the US, somehow it is possible research, research tells us and a lot of elaborate experiments were done way back in the 80s or even in the 70s, which tell us that with 6 degrees of separation, we are able to connect with one another. That means that is the level of networking we have and today with technology that networking as the level of networking has gone up to a significant extent. So, having discussed <coughs> the relevance and the significance of networking in a socio-cultural context in an interpersonal context, we are talking about networking as building relationships, understanding relationships, getting a bird's eye view of relationship, getting a God's eye view of relationship, when we explore analyze, identify patterns of transactions, nature of interactions amongst different networked communities. Now, but that is a theoretical kind of research. A social, social network is a social structure made up of a set of social actors like people's organizations, people organizations uh, can be didactized one to one or other social interactions between multiple actors. A perspective provides a set of methods for analyzing the entire thing. 
while we are not doing that, this is a very, very important component of the social media and the various people who have evolved social media, who look at these trends and this is something which has become very, very significant in the context of business and commerce. And that is the reason we are talking a little about it, so that if you are a little interested in social networking, you can evolve strategies for doing good social networking. You can also find out why people examine this particular area, explore research and social networking and how it can have significance in various contexts. In fact, in some of the areas we will do a little bit of experimentation together and the findings I am sure will be very, very relevant for our soft skills course. You see that uh, you can analyze uh, networks at uh, a very basic level, micro level, you can analyze them at uh, meso level, uh, middle level. You can talk about huge networks like networks on Facebook, a huge network of millions of people and in each case you are trying to identify certain things. There are a lot of case studies and uh, I will definitely provide you with a couple of uh, links to books and references which tell you how this uh, analysis of uh, people's behavior in networks reveal a lot of things. For instance, um, uh, I will give you some examples towards the end and uh, probably that will help us to a certain extent. Relevance, how people behave in small and large networks. I have already discussed the concepts of six degrees of separation, but to identify who is influence, what kind of interactions take place. Now, you see that uh, when you are looking at Facebook and other social network uh, and social media sites, to a very great extent these components come in as significant as I will quickly share with you towards the end of this talk. Why do they behave so? You will look at language, you will look at culture, you will look at cognitive and emotive factors which be make people behave in significant ways. We will take up a few case studies, we will quickly look at what basically happens over there and the most important part is how to modify behavior. Because you see that uh, for instance, if you are looking at tweets, tweets have become very popular these days with advertisers and many multinational companies use tweets for advertising. Why? Because you see that this is where they get a lot of feedback about their products, how they are being perceived, what is being successful, what is being not. In the context of retweets and the way that uh, these tweets proliferate and that is what I said that uh, during this session you will get some links to certain experiments that we have set up which use social media like tweets or Facebook in order to understand how these behaviors are very, very influential and you can learn from these and even apply them to your own life in improving your social skills and your soft skills. <coughs> so, now if you are moving to social networking in the technological context, practice of expanding the number of one's business social contact by making connection through individuals. On the other hand, networking has uh, gone on almost as long as society themselves have existed okay. and with the unparalleled potentials of wave, you see that now a set of new paradigms have evolved, a set of new guidelines have to be explored and that is the reason we are discussing all these things. Now, this image will give you an idea of the wide range of convergences when we are talking about social networks. You have documents and contents, you have events, you have music, you have wiki, virtual worlds, uh, live casting, pictures, reviews and ratings, locations, business networks, commercial dashboards, listening and targeting, social networks of various kinds, discussion boards, okay, streams, social curation, blogs and conversations, so collaborations and what not, FAQs frequently ask questions, responses and a wide range of activities and all this is happening every moment of our lives through the apps that we have, through the media, media uh, let us say modules, the media uh, software, the media apps that we keep on using. Okay. So, starting from the rudiments of texting, SMS to let us say Facebook, tweets, Twitters, LinkedIn and so on and so forth. This is a wide expanding area 
where you see that people network in specific ways and the way they network, the way they behave can make them more influential or can make them more successful. So, if you are asking the question why is it that we have discussed it so far, if you are asking the question how it is going to be relevant in the context of soft skills, here is the answer. Because if you research this, if you explore this, then at some point of time you will develop skills for applying them and becoming more influential in the context of networking. So, that is something which I cannot provide here, but that is something in the direction of which I can uh, develop your interests, so that you can pursue it in the future. Now, you see that uh, we are taking up social media next and uh, because social media is an area where networking is very, very pre prevalent. So, it is a computer mediated tool that allows people's, uh, people and companies organization to create, these are the keywords, share, exchange information. So, you are able to create information and then you are able to share or exchange information and this happens not through one to one or face to face or social communication, but through virtual communities. Now, this is the key difference when we are talking about how it is different from the real community that we were talking about earlier. So, you have blogs, forums, photo sharing, social gaming, video sharing, virtual worlds. These are examples we have already talked about some of these and new rules and relationship are now being established. You see that some of the key features I have talked about not necessarily rules, first one is virality. Now, this is a feature which can be used to advantage, to dis create, to dis disadvantage, to manipulate people's mindsets, to create rumors or to develop a sense of liking or a dislike for certain things. Now, virality is where something proliferates on social media, something goes viral means something suddenly becomes very popular and everybody has watched it. To begin with, this manages to get wide coverage. Now, what will get viral is something which scientists and researchers are exploring. It is difficult to predict, but to a certain extent when things go viral, then they are successful because they get lot of media attention. Imagine going viral is like getting an advertisement free of cost. Location sensitivity is something certain things, certain events are location sensitive okay. and people who might be virtually in different places, but are attached to that particular location will respond to that. Let us say people NRIs would respond to something which is happening in India. So, location specificity, time sensitivity, politics, time sensitivity, certain deadlines to be achieved and within that a lot of rumors, lot of spread of rumors or imagine uh, shares, the, the value of shares going up and down depending on okay, the buying and selling and what is being proliferated, how it is being perceived by people. The concept of identity is very, very interesting and relevant in the sociocultural, uh, the context of social networks and social media, because there you have a virtual identity, your identity is created there, it is proliferated there and it can be brought to an end or can be deglorified or glorified there. This is very significant through the various things we talked about through virality and different kinds of proliferation techniques. Sharing as with uh, uh, let us say normal social transactions, sharing is very important, but sharing takes place in a different way. You share with anonymous users, you share with anonymous communities, you do not know who, are, who you are sharing with, but there is also a tra exchange or a transaction, certain goodies or rewards, how to share, what to share, what are the implications of these sharings, because a lot of very exciting and interesting things happen either through sharing of resources or through collaboration, like programming on Linux, different kinds of things being developed, different kinds of software being developed. I can talk of one open source software, so let us say for different kinds of uh, uh, let us say products, which uh, otherwise are very, very expensive. Group formations obviously, for sharing you need to form groups and collaboration, which I talked about. Relevance this cannot be uh, overemphasized, authority, how you are perceived and uh, what kind of authority you are a figure you are able to create, what kind of uh, sense of authority you are able to communicate, power you are able to communicate, creativity, identity formation, public opinion, which are again linked authority, public opinion, who says, let us say if the PM says something, it has the voice of authority and the same tweet created by somebody else would not kind of spread to a such a significant extent. 
history and authenticity, what Salman Khan or a star says will carry a lot of weightage, whereas a factory worker saying the same thing will not probably get heard or it will not go viral. The concept of history and authenticity is something which I will just quickly touch upon, because you see that today in social media, for instance in on Facebook and many of these uh, uh, news feeds, whatever is happening is reaching millions of people. That means, uh, very many people, thousands and millions of people, crores of people believe what is being said over there. So, it has become a very, very powerful alternative to media, which is apparently the authentic voice, but here you have started exploring an alternative authentic voice. Effect on the interpersonal relationship very much there and, and we have already discussed that. So, key examples uh, for instance, if you are looking at uh, the contemporary context, Facebook's news feed is arguably the single most important information source on earth. Okay. 1.9 billion people turn daily for everything from breaking news to baby pictures. So, the significance uh, of that needs to be highlighted. And uh, I am giving you a few examples from uh, one of the studies that I have cited at the end by Gupta and Brooke, where you see that uh, what basically happened was that uh, the, the kind of uh, the uh, Arab revolution, which uh, took place in 2011 and the way that people rebelled and uh, overthrew the existing regime was uh, precipitated by the use of let us say the num number of Facebook users. So, it starts off with one person setting himself on fire and then you see that uh, Egyptian protests take place on streets and then you find that uh, by the 2000 uh, 11 roughly uh, little less than let us say I would say um, two to three months, the regime comes to a collapse. Now, this happens through Facebook to a very great extent. Facebook played a very significant role here. So, this is just uh, one example or if you are looking at the London riots, which took place in 2011, it essentially precipitated through tweets. So, you see that uh, somebody gets sought the first night of rioting and then lot of tweets okay. and uh, based on the tweets as we were talking about location specificity and time specificity, people go to those particular regions and through tweets they know where to converge, where to interact, where to start doing what they have to do. And so, you see that tweets was used for group formation to motivate a collective action in a very, very significant and massive way. So, here are two examples and you find that tweets as well as Facebook are used by terrorists and by a number of other people. And these are just two examples of how powerful the social media can be through the process of social networking. So, I hope that uh, the, uh, for instance, if you do manage to get the book using social media for global security, it will give you a lot of insights into how these processes take place. But what we talked about in the context of securities could be also in the context of advertising for sales, for improving the brand name, bolstering the brand name of a particular company or for let us say persuading people to give to give charity for so many things. So, this is very, very significant and we hope that uh, you will do be doing the studies with us and we will come up with some more insights and I will be sharing some more interesting papers, which will if you are interested in this particular area will take you a long, long way in identifying what you should read and how you should proceed in this particular line. Thank you.